Welcome to the West Wing Week. This week we are broadcasting dispatches from travel with Vice President Joe Biden through China, Mongolia, and Japan. In between meeting with world leaders and speaking with locals, the Vice President took in the sights, sounds, and culture of the Far East. Join the Vice President as he opens new channels of communication with China, gets to know Mongolian leaders and culture at a traditional Nadam festival, and visits Japanese communities recovering from the March earthquake and tsunami before speaking to U.S. troops in Tokyo and Hawaii. That's August 18th through the 25th for West Wing Week, Dispatches Asia. We begin our journey in the bustling Chinese capital of Beijing, where the Vice President started and ended his first full day of the trip at the Great Hall of the People. Upon arrival, Vice President Biden's host and Chinese counterpart, Vice President Xi, greeted him with an elaborate welcome ceremony in the North Hall. The Vice Presidents and their delegations then gathered for formal meetings where Vice President Biden reiterated the economic importance of a strong U.S.-China relationship. But it was the Vice President's visit to a local lunch spot that had China talking. The Vice President shared pork buns, noodles, and cucumbers with American Ambassador to China Gary Locke and his wife Mona, as well as daughter-in-law Kathleen and granddaughter Naomi, who traveled with him through Asia, and who he introduced to the other diners. This is my granddaughter. That evening, it was back to the Great Hall of the People for a banquet dinner in the Vice President's honor that showcased the deep musical traditions of China. Friday, August 19th began in a familiar setting for the Vice President, the Beijing Hotel, which was the site of meetings he held during his first trip to China as a senator in 1979. Now, as Vice President, he was back co-hosting a meeting of American and Chinese business leaders with Vice President Xi. The U.S. economy is highly resilient and has a strong capacity for self-repairment. We believe that the U.S. economy will achieve even better development as it rises to challenges. We welcome, President Obama and I, we welcome, encourage, and see nothing but positive benefits flowing from direct investment in the United States from Chinese businesses and Chinese, uh, uh, Chinese entities. It means jobs. It means American jobs. Next was a meeting with Chinese Premier Wen Jiabo at the Purple Light Pavilion in the Chinese Leadership Compound. Premier, thank you very much for the hospitality. What a magnificent place. <laughs> After their meeting, Premier Wen offered the Vice President an impromptu tour of the pavilion, built long ago by emperors and now part of the central headquarters for China's political leadership. Never wanting to make a president wait too long, the Vice President then traveled back to the Great Hall of the People to meet with Chinese President Hu Jintao in the ornate Fujian Room. On Saturday, August 20th, it was time to leave Beijing, but first the Vice President made a stop at the American Embassy to thank the staff and their families for serving the United States mission abroad. Then, at the invitation of Vice President Xi, the Vice President boarded Air Force Two to fly to the rapidly developing city of Chengdu in southwestern China, our second stop on the trip. On Sunday, the Vice President kicked off his day in Chengdu with an address on U.S.-China relations at Sichuan University, speaking on a range of issues facing the two largest economies in the world. A more prosperous China will mean more demand for American-made goods and services and more jobs back home in the United States of America. To state it bluntly, we have a stake in one another's success. The Vice President then met with the governor of Sichuan province before taking a road trip to the nearby city of Dujanyang to tour the reconstruction efforts since a devastating earthquake struck the region in 2008. There, the two Vice Presidents toured a local high school that had been rebuilt since the quake, which featured a basketball court that had been built with a donation from the NBA. Vice President, this is going to take all day. Oh. The two vice presidents then dropped in on an English language class to talk with students. What I see is great, great, great progress. And that's the reason why the vice president and I are spending so much time talking with one another. We both believe that our progress has to continue. We have a mutual interest. Next was a Chinese tea ceremony with Vice President Xi at a traditional tea house.
From a nearby bridge, the vice president checked out the Dujenyang irrigation system, a marvel of engineering built over 2,000 years ago to prevent flooding in the region. Vice President Biden then thanked his counterpart for such wonderful hospitality and bid farewell to China. On Monday, August 22nd, Air Force Two touched down at Genghis Khan International Airport in Ulaanbaatar, Mongolia, where a full welcome ceremony was underway and the Prime Minister was waiting to greet Vice President Biden. This visit was an important stop for the Vice President. It had been more than six decades since a sitting American Vice President visited Mongolia and 22 years since the Mongolian people embraced democracy. Mr. Vice President, there is a proverb saying that an old friend is the best friend. Therefore, the visit of the U.S. Vice President to Mongolia after 67 years is certainly an old friend's visit for us. I welcome you again and wish you a pleasant stay in Mongolia. The Vice President later met the President of Mongolia in a ceremonial gear, an ancient and traditional Mongolian dwelling still used today throughout the country. Uh, do you play the instrument? Yes, I play. Uh, yeah, all handmade. It really is. It is truly magnificent. Design is very ancient one, you know. After the morning of official business came the ultimate Mongolian cultural experience, a traditional Nadam festival on the outskirts of Ulaanbaatar, where the vice president met back up with Prime Minister Batbold. There was horse racing, throat singing, non-throat singing, food, traditional Mongolian wrestling, dancing, and archery, which the vice president tried his hand at. Wow. Oh, wow. The Vice President awarded medals to the winners of the day's sporting competitions and was invited to name a horse before he left, a Mongolian honor of the highest order. I'd like to name Celtic. Celtic. In honor of my Irish heritage. Good. Very good. Celtic. Bidding goodbye to Mongolia, the Vice President then took off for Japan. Tuesday, August 23rd, the Vice President started in Tokyo, traveling first to Kante, the residence of the Japanese Prime Minister, where the two leaders met and had a working lunch. The Vice President then flew north to the city of Sendai, one of the area's hardest hit by the tsunami last March. Shortly after landing, the Vice President spoke on the second floor of the Sendai airport, where hundreds of residents from nearby neighborhoods fled to escape the tsunami's path. He expressed sympathy, admiration, and continued support from the U.S. as Japan continues to recover and rebuild. The American people are also proud and honored by the way they have been able to assist. They're proud to continue doing whatever you would like us to do as you rebuild. And that's because of a simple proposition. It's not because of government to government or military to military relations. It's because of the genuine affection the American people have for the Japanese people. After paying his respects at a memorial site where the town of Natori once stood, the vice president took a short ride to a temporary housing facility that hundreds of Natori residents now call home. He met many of the displaced families currently living there, and a Pomeranian named Melon, who survived the disaster for a week in a parked car before being rescued and returned to her owner. We will stay as long as necessary to help you. On Wednesday, August 24th, the Vice President visited U.S. service members and their families at Yokota Air Base to thank them for their quick and decisive efforts to help the Japanese people in the wake of the disaster. Whatever we need done, we turn to you. We turn to you like they did here in Japan. Thank you for what you've done for the people of Japan and their time of need, and I'm honored to be here today, and I look forward to meeting as many as you are willing to stick around. That evening, the Vice President left for Hawaii, where he arrived on the morning of the same day he left, having crossed the international date line, making this the longest Wednesday in West Wing Week history. That evening, the Vice President visited the USS Arizona Memorial at Pearl Harbor near Honolulu. This year marks the 70th anniversary of the attack on Pearl Harbor. It was early in the morning on a Sunday morning. Many of the crew were asleep. Some of the crew were on watch, but 1,177 men were killed no way out. in the few, you know, many of them because there was no way out. The ship went down so quickly. We had other ships, the Oklahoma that I mentioned earlier, capsized and took 500 or so men with her. But, but Arizona had an unusually large crew complement that, as a consequence of the ship's destruction so quickly, were all lost.
On Thursday, August 25th, the Vice President made the last stop of his trip, addressing U.S. troops at Kaneohe Bay Marine Corps Air Facility on the east side of Oahu. So I mean this from the bottom of my heart, on behalf of a grateful nation, let me once again say thank you. Thank you and your spouses for everything you have done and what you continue to do to keep this country safe. I'm honored as Vice President of the United States to be able to stand before you. Whether it's a thousand of you in a hangar or six of you in a fob, I'm honored. To find out more information on any of these topics or to see complete videos of these events, go to whitehouse.gov. And thanks again for checking out your West Wing Week. Hey, face. Okay. No, I got it. I got it. Huh? He's talking to me. Okay, you can keep it. I got my own camel here. Okay, ready to go. Photo station.